Hey guys, this is Ethercord here, and welcome to another video for today. Um, I know there's been a lot of scare and a lot of craziness going on with this whole situation and me being trapped out of my own country, but um, why not make a positive video today, you know, to kind of like, you know, ease the fears a little bit with a lot of people being stuck at home. And this is kind of a horrible thing to think it's a good thing, but my actual sub count has gone up as of recently. I guess it's because a lot of people are stuck back home. I don't know if YouTube is going to survive this whole pandemic. I know that uh, YouTube staff, when coming to check like copyright policy and everything, is going to be a little bit bad because they're forcing a lot of their staff to stay home. So they're going to rely a lot on automated um, processing of checking, like if things are okay or not, which they even themselves will say, like, yeah, this might get bad, but we have no choice, which I understand. But I decided today I wanted to actually make a video talking about how the past month of March has been for me being in Paraguay and Brazil and just what it's like in this beautiful continent of South America and what it's kind of like never actually leaving my country or continent of origin, which is North America. So what about South America is so different from North America? What is it with this split? Like, let's talk about it. So originally, I started off in my state of Mississippi, where I took a two-hour drive to New Orleans Airport in Louisiana, and I flew from New Orleans, Louisiana to Miami, Florida, and then I took a flight from Miami, Florida all the way to Sao Paulo, Brazil. And then when I went to Sao Paulo, Brazil, after my overnight flight to there, a very long flight, oh my god, I then took one more flight from Sao Paulo, Brazil, all the way to Asuncion, Paraguay. And altogether, oh wait, I'm not done yet exactly. After I got to Asuncion, Paraguay, I then took a five to six hour bus ride to Ciudad del Este, finally getting to my destination. So overall, I would say that whole process took, I would say a little bit over 30 hours. I think I left noon, I left my house at noon on March 3rd, and then I got to Cramchi's house, I think at about 8 p.m. the next day. So I was tired. Like, I remember I finally saw Cramchi again at the airport, and I was like, yeah. And then when we got in the taxi to get to the bus station, I was like, Ugh. I was passed out of sleep. I bet she's not in the room right now, but she would say the exact same thing. Like, yeah, I was tired as heck. Oh, my God. Those three flights, especially that that overnight flight from uh, from Miami, Florida to Brazil. Like, oh, my God. I, I've never taken a flight that long before, and it was just it was insane. I watched three movies on the way there. I watched three movies, but my God, I can't, I can't do that <laughs> again. I will have to when I go back home, but my God, that was something. Now let's get into the physical stuff about Paraguay. Uh, let's start about talking about the country as a whole. Overall, I would say that Paraguay, if you want to get a good idea of what the country looks like, because it's not like really a major country in the world, uh, it has about 7 million people, which is a decent country-sized population, but it's not like a major one where it has at least 100 million plus people, like a decent portion of the world's population living. So if you want an idea of what Paraguay, honest to God, reminds me of, it looks a lot like the country of Spain. It really does. Like, it looks very nice, and that's a compliment. I don't know if that I don't know if people have a good opinion of Spain or not, but it looks a lot like it in my opinion. I say that because I love how um, the designs of how when you go across the neighborhoods in the street, it kind of elevates and de-elevates a little bit. I don't know if that's the right word. Like as you go down the road, it either goes up or down slightly, and then the houses are kind of like structured like that as well. And you can see like the houses are also very colorful and vibrant with very bright stuck out colors like if you go back home to the states the colors look a lot more washed out but i also like how the houses are different in shape and size as well and you can see like how back home also a lot of the houses look the same with like very washed out red and white colors with the house but back here in paraguay you see a lot of the houses they look a lot you see a lot of reds you see a lot of yellows you see a decent amount of blues also I noticed that and I just really like how the colors are a lot more vibrant uh, people like to wear more bright rich colors than back home like in the States again like everything I'm not saying it's not colorful back in the United States but the colors are a lot more washed out they're a lot more um, soft with how much they stick out here they're a lot stronger with colors I really like that 
Uh, let's get into the cities I've been in. Um, Paraguay, uh, I had to fly in specifically to the capital city instead of uh, my uh, girlfriend's city because I had to get my visa on arrival when I got there. And that's a whole other thing for another story when I get to that. That was a crap show as in itself. But um, I arrived in Asuncion, Paraguay. That's the capital city of the country. That's where the president of the, of the country lives. And I won't deny, I was not impressed. Uh, I didn't like it. The city looked kind of bad. Uh, out of it's where like at least a three or a third to a fourth of the country lives there and i will say that um it looks a lot like the uh the sand dune city in one of the star wars movies i don't know the name of it but it's like tatooine or something i don't know but it it didn't look nice it, the the cities and the buildings were were uh, crunchy and like that's not a right word <laughs> they're very um they're very decrepit they're old there's a lot of sand everywhere People don't look happy. It looks dirty. And uh, Cram, she even understands. Like, she and her mom used to live there, and they don't like it. A lot of people that live in Cram, city, they don't like it either, and they used to live there, and like, I'm moving somewhere better. So no one likes the Sunshion. And uh, there is a problem in the country with, like, dengue outbreak, which is a disease you get at a certain point of the year because a mosquito comes out, and virtually all the cases are in that city. So people don't like that. So, again, I wasn't impressed by a Sunshion, but when we get out of there and we arrive to Cramchy City, which is Ciudad del Este, it's a whole nother ball game. Ciudad del Este is a very pretty city. It reminds me a lot of Spain. I love it. It looks very pretty and beautiful. I love it a lot. Uh, I love the trees they have in the city. Like in the Paraguay also, on the bus ride here to her city, you would see a lot of the more countryside parts of the country where people live more simplistic lives instead of like more of the uh, city uh, big economic boosting parts of the country uh, The trees and the agriculture is insane here Like the trees are literally taller than a lot of three-story buildings like three-story apartment complexes that people live in Like I just love it and like the trees look vibrant There will be like trees you can literally reach out and grab from the patio of the house we're staying in It's just I love it a lot um and then if we also get to uh, another city we went to to go to visit the uh, Monday Falls, which are like these giant like waterfalls, which I'm not sure if they go into the Amazon rainforest, but they're a nice tourist attraction. It's in the city known as Franco, which in my opinion is even more beautiful than Ciudad del Este. Ciudad del Este is still really pretty and beautiful as a city, but Franco was even way more nicer. It's not as industrialized and as like, you know, um, what is it, technologically advanced as... Ciudad del Este, but Franco is still kind of like that. It's more of like an old town kind of countryside kind of place with a little bit of like advancement, but it's more simplistic and it's way more in touch with nature and it's way more green there and it's just very like it looks pure and humble and I just love it a lot. Um, when it comes to the Monday Falls, um, it's like this nice little tourist attraction where they show these giant waterfalls coming down You can go and like walk down steps to look at them They look beautiful and if you walk down the steps and you look very close to the edge of the waterfalls You will literally see like tiny miniature rainbows Like come from the waterfalls and that's just it was crazy I've never I was shocked because I've never seen a rainbow that close up before it's amazing and there was also like a nice little diner like area with like glass doors and everything where you could eat out and have lunch and you could literally look out. You would have this restaurant on the edge of the cliff and you would look out at the falls and it would just, it was amazing and it looked great just like sipping like, you know, like wine or eating like lunch or anything like that out by these waterfalls with these giant rainbows popping out. It's amazing. Uh... Other than that, uh, let's now go on to Brazil, because I also visited Brazil because Ciudad del Este is a city that lives probably like less than 30 minutes from both the borders of Brazil and Argentina, which is another country in South America. So uh, they are all, uh, when it comes to Paraguay and Brazil, they are separated, their border is separated from a bridge that's known as the Friendship Bridge, which is over this huge lake that separates both countries. And I absolutely love it. You can like either take a motorcycle or your car across the bridge and then they have like these little separate lines on the ends of both of them where you can either just walk across them. And that way you can, there's even like a little line that you can step on. Uh, you can put one leg on one end of it and one leg on the other and you'll technically be in both countries. I just love that. It's amazing. Uh, let's go on to Brazil and how I feel about Brazil. Now, um, when it comes to the continent of South America, 
Um, most people will think of Brazil. Brazil is, I think, the sixth most populated country in the world with like 200 million people. And then comparing that to Paraguay that only has like 7 million, that's a big step. And um, yeah, Brazil has a major, pretty big role in like the world in terms of like its country and its power and everything like that. Now, um, I think that uh, when it comes to Brazil, I love it a lot as well because it's a very intact with nature and everything like that. And that is because I think like two thirds of the entirety of the Amazon rainforest is in Brazil. I think like the other, I'm not exactly sure, like the other third of it is either, I think it's in like, I don't know if it's Ecuador or if it's like Venezuela or Colombia or something like that. I think it's Colombia. I'll look that up later. But um, it's very intact with nature like that. And there's a lot of forest area. Now, when it comes to uh, Brazil, when it, we only really entered the city of Iguazu, I think that's what it's called, Iguazu. And I will say when it comes to like the people there, um, there were some nice places I saw in some nice neighborhoods that we saw in Brazil and some neighborhoods that didn't look nice. We did pass by one country club that's like locked down. And that's kind of interesting. It looked kind of like a, it was a country club where people lived, like rich people live. But however, it looked a little bit more like a military base or something like that with the giant gate and everything. But, um, but I will say if Paraguay looked a lot more like Spain, uh, Brazil looked a lot like Mexico and that's not like, I would say it's like, it looks like the more nicer parts of Mes Mexico. There were some places that didn't look so nice in Iguazu, but there were a lot of places that did look really nice, like nice little neighborhoods with like kids playing on the street and everything like that and animals walking around. That's, that's cute. And it looked nice. Um, I will say one thing that's crazy about Brazil when you drive through there and definitely also if you're going through Brazil, there's also the countryside we went through. The grass, oh my God, they grow the grass so high off the ground. Like the grass literally was grown so high off the ground that literally it was higher than um, Cramsey's little, uh, I think she drives a Subaru that we were driving in. Like a su it's, the, t the grass is literally taller than a tiny little Subaru car. It's insane. Uh, they keep that grass really tall when it comes to like being close to the forest area and then also being close to like where they grow the crops and do a lot of the agricultural work there. It, it's crazy. Uh, another thing we did while in Brazil in Iguazu is there's a place called the Iguazu Falls, which was very something for me. I, I love the falls. These falls actually go into the Amazon rainforest and there's like a couple of giant couple of them and we went in there to this tourist attraction that lets us see that and you pay like 20 bucks or something like that uh and they uh you go down this elevator and you get to walk across this tiny little bridge that literally like is hanging off the edge of a cliff and you can like take photos and look at these giant waterfalls that go into the amazon rainforest it's insane uh i was really paranoid because i don't think i've ever expressed it in a video before but i have an extreme fear of heights like I felt like I was gonna die especially with a lot of people walking towards the edge of the bridge to get the best pictures I was like oh my god I can't do this anymore but again a bunch of other miniature rainbows that were right in front of you were beautiful I loved it a lot very beautiful place to do I don't want to go back there because I hate heights <laughs> but it was nice um, another thing I will note about Brazil because we went and did a couple of these while I was here Brazil, I don't know why, but I, correct me if I'm wrong on this to anyone watching who's from Brazil, because I know I have some uh, Latin America, South America viewers, but Brazil has an interesting um, obsession with water parks. There's a lot of water parks in Brazil, apparently, where that's a big tourist attraction there. We went to one that was in Iguazu. That, it was funny because it was in the middle of nowhere. We're like, you'll look out and there'll be a bunch of people at this water park. And then if you look out like in the distance for like almost the entirety of like your viewing distance, it's just in the middle of nowhere, which just crop fields and everything where they grow uh, the food and everything. So uh, I found that interesting. But at the same time, it's just it's just interesting how like they love water parks and they're cool. They're really cool water parks. Definitely. Um, another thing I will say about Brazil is uh, I want to go into the culture and then I'll go back into uh, the culture a little bit about interest in media in Paraguay. But in Brazil, when it comes to like music, I noticed that uh, Cramchi explained to me, I didn't get to hear it, but there is kind of like this, their own equivalent to like country music because to the people watching who live in the United States like I do, 
we have like country music where it goes like down down got my toolbox or something like that i don't like it i don't like country music at all but um brazil has their own equivalent to like country music and it sounds very similar to that like i hear they use she tells me they use a lot of the uh, ukulele and a lot of like you know acoustic guitars for like this country sounding music so i found that interesting too now when it comes to like country music equivalent in paraguay uh, it's not like that more like folk like uh hospitable like like you know like very simplistic life kind of music um they kind of like like a lot more of like latin pop kind of music like in paraguay cram she told me that at one point like the number one song that people were listening to all day every day for like i think two years was that shakira song called she wolf like shakira is like extremely popular here like they people love shakira like she's from colombia or something i believe she's from there and like everyone in the continent like brazil paraguay argentina uruguay they love shakira she's like huge and they love a lot of like latin pop style music here in paraguay um next thing i want to get into which is really important for a lot of latin american culture that i saw or south american culture is in a lot of these countries they take soccer very seriously paraguay soccer is huge here you go to like a bar here or if you go to a mall and they have like different tvs in these huge malls they have where they have uh all the sports playing and it's all soccer no basketball no football like or i know like here in paraguay they call it football but back home we call it soccer because we have our own version of football but soccer is like huge here like you only see people playing soccer there's very few people playing football or basketball or golf or whatever they love they love soccer uh and it's funny because if you look at things like the world cup and everything like that other than like italy and france winning a few times it's always a country in south america winning the um world cup be it argentina brazil uruguay anything like that uh next i'm going to go into uh what people kind of look like and how they um how like the average paraguayan or brazilian kind of like looks like in terms of, like physical appearance and skin tone i noticed that um in paraguay this is from my own perspective so if you disagree or if i'm inaccurate on this then correct me i don't mean to be disrespectful with that but um people in paraguay uh have a lot of it's kind of more of like a mixture of european ancestry and a lot of like very rich native american blood uh people are very tanned uh very uh native american like dark skin caramel that's what cram she looks like a lot too and cram she does look like a lot of the people that live here uh but yeah very uh strong with native american since there is a decent sized portion of people in paraguay that are uh native american as well i've seen some like full-blooded native american people here while i've been here as well so that's what a lot of uh, people in Paraguay look like. Um I also noticed in Paraguay there is a small like um portion of the country like they have their own little small Chinese community. There are a decent amount of Chinese people living here too. Um I would say that's probably because of the Chi- I'm just assuming here by because I th- of the Chinese or the Chinese economy growing uh more powerful uh, and more uh prevalent in the world as time goes on i guess that's just a lot of people from that country setting up shop there and maybe some like trade distributions with the country of paraguay because paraguay does a lot of trade with um china so i guess that kind of explains why there's like a decent portion of chinese people living there um i also there's another this is the most interesting thing because this isn't just easy, even in paraguay this is like all over south america there is a decent portion of german people living in south america that li- that speak primarily german yeah we even i even saw a couple of them when i was traveling through brazil and a little bit in paraguay but you'll see these very um they look i'm not german but there's like people who are very light skin like me but they're very blonde haired blue eyed and you would hear them speak in german and yeah there's like a portion of like german communities i guess that's because of um that is because in world war 2 after that ended a lot of german uh people uh moved to uh South America after the Second World War. And then there's also this like there's also this big conspiracy theory that not a lot of people in the world believe but a decent amount. And it's kind of well known, I think, uh, that a lot of people believe that Adolf Hitler didn't actually die in World War II. There were theories that he escaped and hid in Argentina for the rest of his life, which make I guess 
there's some credibility, but it's still kind of in conspiratory realm. But I'm rambling, but it does explain why there's a, um, a decent portion of Paraguay and a lot of other countries in South America to have a German population. Next, uh, I want to describe how the people in Brazil look. If you go to the country of Brazil, um, there is, and I actually looked this up to make sure, there is a decent portion of the population that's more uh, black, and there's a decent portion of the population that's white, and there's also a really, I think like almost, I read like almost half of the people in Brazil are of mixed uh, African and European ancestry. So uh, yeah, you have a, a big portion of the country that's a mixed, and uh, another interesting thing about Brazil is it's the, I think the only country in a lot of these South American countries uh, that speaks Portuguese instead of Spanish. So that was kind of difficult to really like get by there because I was practicing up on my Spanish when I came here, but I didn't consider uh, Portuguese because Brazil. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much what Brazilians kind of look like. Uh, very beautiful people as well. Uh, you get into Argentina. Uh, Argentinian people, I hear from Cramchy explain it to me, and also Uruguayan people, they are very um, European-like, very white, uh, very, uh, yeah, very rich in that kind of uh, ancestry. And then if you go to the country of Chile, they are also very, um, very white, very European. Um, and they also, funny thing, I, when I met a few people that were Chilean, I did notice one thing that distinguishes them from a lot of other people in South America is they have a very thick accent with how they speak. And uh, they're very, um, very passionate with how they uh, do their their speech and you kind of notice that plot. So I found it interesting. But again, all these people, I, I love them. They were really nice people to me. And I'm gonna get into that next thing, which is the kindness that I noticed in a lot of these South American countries. It's unbelievable. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was here, I'll get into a few of them. Uh, before the whole like coronavirus lockdown thing happened here in Paraguay, uh, the night when it was announced we had a curfew, everyone in town was like scrambling to get ready for it. And we noticed that a guy, uh, his car broke down on the side of the road. And while we were at a stoplight, we saw that his car broke down. He had to put in a neutral and he got his foot out of the car. He opened up the door to get his foot out to like, hopefully while it was in neutral to push it out of the road. And we saw another guy who stopped his car in the middle on the side of the road, got out and helped push his car out of the road into the gas station. That, I've never seen that happen. You won't see that back in the United States in a lot of places. Some places maybe, but like for the most part, you will not see that back in the States. So it was unbelievable to see that. Uh, another thing I really liked was um, the help I got at the airport. Uh, when I was flying out to uh, Brazil, right before I was flying out to Brazil, I got into a conversation with a woman who spoke uh, who was who spoke Portuguese and English and she was flying back to Brazil because she was someone who was living in the United States who was from Brazil and she helped me out a lot here very nice lady from Brazil who helped me uh, get through there because it's my first time traveling all by myself to another country and continent um, then when I was on the overnight flight I sat next on my overnight flight to Sao Paulo Brazil I sat next to a lady who only spoke por spoke Portuguese who was coming back home and we still, even though like we couldn't understand each other, she still was like nice to me and she tried to conversationalize with me and she helped me out with things I was confused about. And we looked at the map on this digital screen of like how far we were traveling. And she told me about a lot of nice places in Brazil to visit. And again, like of the very little English she knew and the very little Portuguese I knew, like we connected and it was a nice little like exchange and she was very nice to me. Uh, and then when I got into the Brazil airport, the Sao Paulo Brazil airport, oh my God, it was a crap show. Uh, I, again, I only practiced up on my Spanish, not my Portuguese. And so there was just a lot of difficulty of knowing where the heck I had to go. And uh, a lot of people, like the majority of people there couldn't understand me and I couldn't understand them. So, but however, there was one man and Cramchi told me that person was from Chile. There was this Chilean man who had his wife and his kid with him. And I asked, like, in, like, the very little Portuguese, I tried to be like, please help me, help me. I, I don't know where to go. And he stopped what he was doing, and he tried to help me out. Even though we couldn't understand each other, he still tried to help me, like, look at the board and, like, tell me where to go. And he was, like, very helpful. Like, he spent, like, I think 20 or so minutes just trying to help me out. And I was just like, oh, my God. These people are so nice. They don't understand me. I don't understand them, but they're still like trying to help me. Like what kind of world am I living in? You won't see this back home. 
So yeah, again, like people from Chile and from Brazil and from Paraguay are just super duper nice people. I got to get into uh, Paraguay with um, the niceness of the people here as well. Like I got invited over in Paraguay. I got to see a lot of Cramchi's family. They invited me over for barbecue because like, oh my God, the food here. You got to eat chipa. It's this nice little, um, what is it? It's like kind of like a garlic bread kind of uh, cheesy bread too that you, it's shaped like a donut and then you would eat it. And if it's like brand new, fresh out of the oven, it's so good, but the bread's really sharp and it cuts your teeth, but it's so worth it because it's just gooey and mm, it's like cheesy bread with garlic. It's delicious. And meats, oh my God, people in Paraguay eat so much meat. Oh my God, like they do barbecues all the time and the meat is so cooked to perfection. It's delicious. I'm sorry if there's any vegans watching who don't, are interested in this, but I love my meat and the meat so high quality and so well cooked and good. It was delicious. And they cook it in the stove and it's like right, made right out of the oven and on a barbecue as well. It's just delicious, man. It's delicious. I love the food. Um, another thing I will say, but just overall, like these people in Paraguay and Brazil in Chile, just super duper nice people. Like you, I can't describe how warm and friendly and welcoming all these people are in these countries. These are like just super ultra nice people. Amazing. I just keep going on about it, but it's for real. Um, I'm almost done with this video, but I got two more little quick things I want to describe about being here. Uh, is Paraguay uh, with how they feel about people from the United States or Americans. I don't like to call myself an American because I don't know if that's technically right because Paraguayans are also Americans. They're in South America. But I guess just because like you can't really call someone like a United Statesian or something. So I guess they just call it American. I guess it's weird, but all right. Um, but Paraguayans, when they talk to me, like they like me a lot. They don't have any like negative feelings about people from the United States or anything like that. They think we're all right and we're friendly. And I know United States is a really a uh, big country when it comes to like tourism and going there for like school and work and everything and some of them i talked to they went there uh i heard that uh, in kansas the state of kansas they have a program specifically for people in paraguay with the colleges where people in paraguay go to kansas i think it's like kansas university or something to go to college for like a year or two and study there and it's just they like it a lot when they go there they say it's a fun time when they go there they don't really, I noticed though, like a lot of these people, when they tell me about that, they don't have interest in living there. It's more of like just kind of an experience just to go there and then they want to come back home because Paraguayans and Brazilians and Chileans and Argentinians and Uruguayans, they all like, they're very uh, patriotic. They love their country and that's great. Uh, they, uh, they're very in touch with themselves. And that sounds weird how I just said that. I'm sorry, but they, they're very patriotic and they love their country and that's great. Um, uh, that's yeah, basically they just they love going there and they want to come home. So that's pretty much that uh, But overall I loved Paraguay. I loved going to Brazil. It was unfortunate that I didn't get to go to Argentina I could have gone there But then like the whole lockdown happened and the border closing happened as well And but I will if I have to come back home once this whole virus situation pandemic is over I don't know how long it'll take but once I do have to come back home. I will definitely you know want to come back here i love how people are very intact with themselves i love how life is definitely more simplistic it's not like people here are not well off everyone is financially well off for the most part here people uh but people don't live in kind of like extreme excess lifestyles or very uh materialistic consumer lifestyles that not everyone in the u.s does that but there are a decent portion of people in the United States that do and they're not trying necessarily dissing that that's just how it is but I personally just like how people aim for more of a just kind of simplistic working class just just work and just enjoy each other and keep each other safe and well fed and well nurtured and just enjoy things I like I like the more simplistic lifestyle a lot I really do um, and I like, I also love again, how people are so warm here and so kind. Uh, I love how in South America you do kind of see, I see a little bit more of like a mixture of like European lifestyle mixed in with a little bit of like how a lot of places in African lifestyle kind of mixed together here. I like that a lot. I don't know if that's the wrong way to say it, but that's what I kind of see. Uh, even though I haven't traveled to Europe or Africa, 
but from like watching videos and doing research on how kind of like lifestyles are there, it's a nice little mixture, if that makes sense. I like it a lot. So overall, that's my video about traveling here to South America and seeing these two countries and seeing a lot of people from all over the continent. Uh, how do you guys feel about uh, me coming to South America? How do you guys, have any of you guys ever been there? Do any of you guys live in South America? I know I got some viewers in Brazil. I know I have some viewers in Paraguay, obviously. I have, I think I have a few viewers in Argentina and a few in Chile. Uh, not sure about Uruguay. Uruguay is very small as a country, but I'm rambling. <laughs> but uh, definitely, um, do any of you guys live there? Have I gotten anything right or incorrect? Uh, I love it. I love it here a lot, and I hope I... Um, didn't do any, say anything disrespectful or inaccurate about my time here. But uh, again, uh, do any of you guys want to come here? I would recommend it definitely to visit. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if you enjoy my content and want to further help out my channel, please consider donating to me on Patreon as well as my coffee. Also, please consider smashing that like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribing altogether. Also, remember to check out my gaming channel known as Seether Cord Games and my other no commentary gaming channel known as Seether Chills. All will be linked down in the description down below. Again, I have been Seether Cord, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.